Hi everyone! So, today I will be showing you how to do this effect in 3ds Max and Rayfire. So, before doing any kind of physics simulation, we will have to work on scale. So, go to Customize, Unit Setup, and right here I will be using Meters. The first step is to create a ground. So, go to the Create tab and create a plane. So for the length and the width, I will set it to 10 meters. Then I will create an object that will be part of the simulation. For this tutorial, I will be using a teapot. So here I'll drag a teapot and I'll change the radius to 0.5. Make sure the object is selected. Go to the modifier tab and the modifier list, choose Rayfire Voxels. This modifier should be available if you have a recent version of Rayfire installed. After selecting the modifier, your teapot should be voxelized. Feel free to adjust the voxel size. I will set mine to 0.079 meters. Now, if you look closely, you will see that some blocks are overlapping the ground plane. We don't want that to happen, so we will move the teapot just a little bit. Now, when you're satisfied with the settings, scroll down, open up the export rollout, and choose Mesh per Voxels. Now, all the voxels are individual objects. Let's group them together so it will be easier to work with. Make sure that all the voxels are selected, then go to Group, and create a new group. So the original teapot is still hidden behind all the voxels, but we don't need it anymore. So select teapot 001, then press delete. Now all the objects are ready for physics simulation. Go to the create tab, then go to rayfire, rayfire, and open rayfire folder. Go to the objects tab and you will see three categories, dynamic and unpack objects, static and kinematic objects, and sleeping objects. So all the objects in the dynamic and unpack objects will be considered in the simulation. In the static and kinematic section, objects act independently from the simulation. It can be a ground or walls, but it can also be objects that will push other objects. Finally, objects in the sleeping section will start the simulation only if they get hit by a dynamic or a kinematic object. So knowing all of that, we will assign objects to their respective categories. So first, I will select the ground plane and add it to the static and kinematic object section. Then, I'll select the voxel group and add it to the dynamic and impact objects. Then, let's go to the physics tab and see what we get. As you can see, the blocks are simply falling down, but that's boring. Let's add something else that will push the blocks away. I'll go back to standard primitives and I'll create a box. And we'll animate that box to hit the teapot. So here in the settings, I'll change the length to let's say 1.5 meters, the width to 0.15 meters, and the height to 1 meter. Then I'll select the rotation tool and I make sure that the angle snap is on and I'll change the angle to 45 degrees. I'll put this block a little bit higher, just like that, and push it back a little bit more. Now I go to frame 0. Then I make sure auto key is on, I add the new keyframe, then I move to frame 50. Then I select the block and move it across the frame. And now I make sure that auto key is off. And there you have it. You have the animation for the pushing block. Now let's go back to Rayfire. If you have closed the window, just go back to Rayfire and open Rayfire folder. Now we want to add that pushing block to the static and kinematic objects. Let's go back to physics tab and see what happens. 
Oh, before doing that, let's set the start frame of our simulation. If you scrub through your timeline, at some point, this block will hit the teapot. And we want to set the starting frame right before it hits. As you can see, we're lucky enough that the actual simulation will start at frame 10. So we don't have to change anything. But for you, it is possible that this number will change. So let's select this window and press Alt to W to make it bigger. And let's preview this simulation. The teapot is falling too soon. This is not what we want. To fix that, we will have to put those voxels in the sleeping objects category. To do so, go to the objects tab and under dynamic and impact objects, go to menu and select send to sleeping list. Now all those voxels are now in the sleeping objects section. Now let's preview what happens. So we are almost there. The blocks are still falling on their own even if they are in the sleeping list. That's because the left blocks are creating a domino effect to the blocks on the right. Let's go down to simulation properties and activate dead sleeping objects. And now let's see what happens. So the domino effect doesn't affect the block as much, but they freeze mid-air. This can be a cool time freeze effect, but this is not what we want. So right under dead sleeping objects, let's change the value of revive dead by velocity. I'll set mine to 0.01, but this number can change depending on how you set up your simulation. So let's preview it again and see what happens. Let's add in a gravity to the mix. Let's close Rayfire and go to Space Warps. Make sure Forces is selected and create a gravity. I'll set it as a spherical gravity. I'll change the strength to minus one. I'll move this gravity off screen. So the gravity will be behind the teapot. Now, open up Rayfire, Simulation Properties, let's add the gravity. So make sure it is selected, then click Add. I'll zoom out and you'll see the gravity in action. So let's press Preview. So as you can see, the blocks are getting sucked in by the gravity. But those blocks are also getting hit by that box. You can also animate that gravity if you wish. So now that I'm satisfied with the simulation, I'll just press bake to apply the animation. The next step is to texture all the blocks and render everything out. I will cover texturing and rendering in another tutorial. That's it for today. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave it in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe for more content and I will see you soon.